of what to do with his or her legal problem. These are the parts of a legal opinion letter. First, Heading and Introduction The heading consists of the letterhead of the law firm and date, then the name and the address of the client, a salutation, and a short introduction. As you can see, the words enclosed by the red box is the letterhead and the address of the law firm. The one enclosed by the orange box is the date. The one enclosed by the green box is the name and the address of the client. The one enclosed by the blue box is the salutation and the one enclosed by the pink box is the short introduction. Another part of a legal opinion letter is the issue and the brief answer. Much like in an inter-office memorandum, the issue in the opinion letter is stated in a question form. The answer, likewise, directly answers and summarizes how the law applies to the facts. The words underlined by the red line is the issue, while the words underlined by the yellow line is the brief answer. Let's now proceed with the statement of facts in discussion. For this part, you will only state the facts that are relevant to the issue and discuss how the law applies to the facts. For example, in your letter, you stated that irreconcilable differences is a ground for divorce in Switzerland. You further stated that for four years now, you and your husband can hardly agree on anything that your marriage had become hell with your husband seemingly enjoying to see you suffer. This is the part where we state the facts that are relevant to the issue or the question of your client. The Family Code of the Philippines is explicit, where a marriage between a Filipino citizen and a foreigner is validly celebrated and divorce is thereafter validly obtained abroad by the alien spouse capacitating him to remarry, the Filipino spouse shall have the capacity to marry under Philippine law. This is the part where we apply the law relevant to the facts. Now let's proceed to the conclusion and recommendation. This is an important part when we write a legal opinion letter. In the conclusion, we reiterate the answer to the issues raised. And in the recommendation, we propose a solution or answer the question, what do you propose your client to do? That's why this is very important because this is where we answer our client directly. Example, as stated, a divorce obtained in Switzerland is valid in the Philippines if it was secured at the instance of your husband. We recommend that you talk with your husband and ask if he is filing the divorce. Otherwise, considering his possible psychological incapacity, you may opt to file a petition for declaration of nullity of your marriage based on psychological incapacity under Article 16 of the Family Code. Sincerely yours, Marites C. Mare, Legal Counsel. So, as you can see, the lawyer or the legal counsel here advised their client to file a petition for declaration of nullity based on psychological incapacity or if uh, the husband obtained a divorce in Switzerland, then that would be better. So the client was given options by the legal counsel for the conclusion and record. I will discuss the words and expressions to avoid in writing letters. So there are plenty of different things that we have learned from the previous discussions telling us what to do and what not to do when we write opinions, letters, resolutions, and other legal documents for our clients. For this part, I will tell you the expressions and words that we should avoid when we write a legal opinion letter. This is also useful for those who are working uh, and 
who use communication in their daily transactions in the office. So first, according to our records, this is often superfluous and can be omitted. Next, acknowledge receipt of your letter. This is over formal. It's better to say, we thank you for your letter. As per your letter, according to or as mentioned in, is better. Attached, you will find. This is over formal. It's better to say, we are attaching or we are enclosing. In as much as, just say because. In order to, just say to. May we take the liberty to. Usually, no liberty is involved. Just say, may we, and then continue the statement. Pertaining to, you can use the word about. Prior to, the word before is preferred. Thank you again. Once is enough. You don't have to thank them again. Wish to say, just say what you want to say. And I would say, just say what you want to say. Now let's go to chapter 12, Persuasive Legal Analysis. A persuasive document attempts to convince a third party to decide in favor of the writer's client. The third person may be a judge or arbitrator before whom the lawyer argues to win a case or an opposing part before whom the lawyer sends a demand letter. Persuasive legal writing addressed before a judge are called pleadings, motions, and briefs. So now, what is pleadings? Pleadings are the written statements of the respective claims and defenses of the parties submitted to the court for appropriate judgment. They are the written declarations of affirmation on one side and denial by the other. The rules require that every pleading shall contain in a methodical in logical form, a plain, concise, and direct statement of the ultimate facts relied upon by the pleader for his claim or defense. Now let's go to the kinds of pleading. The claims of a party are asserted in a complaint, counterclaim, cross-claim, a third port party complaint, or complaint in intervention. So now, let's go to the parts of a pleading. The parts of a pleading are captioned, body of the pleading, signature and address, verification, and certification against forum shopping. Here I will show you an example of the caption of a pleadings. The caption sets forth the name of the court, the title of the action, the court docket number if assigned, the designation of the pleading. In the title of the action, the names of the parties are indicated. They shall be named in the original complaint or petition. In subsequent pleadings, it is sufficient to include only the name of the first party on each side with an appropriate indication. The next one is the body of the pleading. The body of the pleading set forth the type or kind of pleading filed. Example, complaint answer. The statements of the party's claim or defense the relief or remedies prayed for and the date of the pleading. Here, I will show you an example of complaint for Rep. Libin. The body of the pleading consists of paragraphs which contain the allegations of the party's claims or defenses. Each paragraph contains a statement of a single set of circumstances. As far as that can be done, with convenience. 
and each are numbered for easy identification. A paragraph may be referred to by its number and the subsequent pleadings. The next one is the headings. Headings are necessary when two or more causes of action are joined. The first shall be titled, first cause of action, and so forth. In the answer, the paragraphs are prefaced. Answer to the first cause of action or answer to the second cause of action and so forth. The last one is the relief and date. The pleading shall specify the relief or remedies sought and may add a general prayer for such further or other relief as may be deemed just and equitable. Every pleading shall be dated. Now let's go to signature and addresses. The rules require that every pleading must be signed by the party or his lawyer. The address of the party or his counsel must be stated. A post office box address is not allowed. The signature of the lawyer constitute a certificate by him that he has read the pleading and that to the best of his knowledge, information, and belief, there is good ground to support it. He likewise certifies that the pleading is not interposed for delay. As a rule, an unsigned pleading produces no legal effect, but the court may allow it if it was due to inadvertence and not for delay. A lawyer who deliberately files an unsigned pleading, signs a pleading in violations of the rule, alleges scandalous or indecent matters, or fails to promptly report to the court a change of his address shall be subject to appropriate disciplinary action. So now let's go to verification. The rule is pleadings need not be under oath, verified, or accompanied by sworn statements. The exception is when the law or rule provides otherwise. Pleadings covered by the rule on summary procedure must be verified. How is pleading verified? A pleading is verified by an affidavit stating that the affiant has read the pleading and that the allegations therein are true and correct of his knowledge and belief. A pleading required to be verified which contains a verification and belief or upon knowledge, information, and belief or lacks proper verification shall be treated as an unsigned pleading. Forum shopping is the act of filing the same suit in different courts. It is an act of malpractice that is prescribed and condemned as trifling with the courts and abusing their processes. It is improper conduct that tends to degrade the administration of justice. The rules require that plaintiff or principal party to certify under oath in the complaint or other initiatory pleading, asserting a claim for relief or in a sworn certification annexed and filed with the pleading that he has not commenced any action or filed any claim involving the same issues in any court, tribunal, or quasi-judicial agency, and to the best of his knowledge, no such other action or claim is pending therein. If there is such other pending action or claim, he must give the complete statement of the present status thereof, and if he should learn that the same or similar action or claim is filed or pending, he shall report that fact within five days to the court where the complaint or initiatory pleading is filed. Effect of Failure to Comply Failure to comply with the requirement for certification against forum shopping shall not be curable by mere amendment of the complaint or other initiatory pleading but shall be a ground for the dismissal of the case upon motion and after hearing without prejudice to the refiling of the case unless otherwise provided. The submission of a false certification 
or not compliance with any of the undertakings shall constitute indirect contempt of court without prejudice to the corresponding administrative and criminal actions. If the facts of the party or his lawyer clearly constitute willful and deliberate forum shopping, the same shall be a ground for summary dismissal with prejudice and shall constitute direct contempt as well as cause for administrative sanction. Here is the example of verification with certification against forum shopping. The rules require that plaintiff or principal party to certify under oath in the complaint or other initiatory pleading, asserting a claim for relief or in a sworn certification annexed and filed with the pleading that he has not commenced any action or filed any claim involving the same issues in any court tribunal or quasi-judicial agency, and to the best of his knowledge, no such other action or claim is pending therein. If there is such other pending action or claim, he must give the complete statement of the present status thereof, and if he should learn that the same or similar action or claim is filed or pending, he shall report that fact within five days to the court where they complaint or initiatory pleading is filed. Rule on liberality and construction of pleadings. Pleadings are liberally construed even if a complaint and intervention is titled motion. It can still be admitted as such complaint under the rule of liberal construction of pleadings. The rules of court procedure shall be liberally construed so as to promote their objective of securing a just, speedy, and inexpensive disposition of every action and proceeding. Exceptions to the rule on liberality a. When the uncertainty and ambiguity in the allegations are systematically utilized as a tactic to trap and confuse the adverse party b. When the allegations are so framed that they are so baked and uncertain as to leave the court, guessing as to what the pleader wants. c. When from the inadequacy of the allegation, it appears that the pleader is suppressing facts material to the disposition of the case. d. When the allegations are not in accordance with or are violations of orders of a court, E. When the allegations are intemperate, derogatory, or false. Motion. A motion is an application for relief other than by a pleading. It is a request made for, to a judge for an order not part of the judgment directing some act to be done in favor of the applicant. All motions must be in writing except those made in open court and shall state a the relief sought to be obtained b the grounds upon which the motion is based c if required by the rules or necessary to prove the facts alleged shall be accompanied by the supporting affidavits and other papers Kinds of motion. Number one is ex parte. is used to refer to motions for orders that can be granted without waiting for a response from the other side. Generally, these are orders that are only in place until further hearings can be held, such as a temporary restraining order. Litigated. It is one in which the court may act upon without prejudicing the rights of the adverse party. Examples of these are motions for reconsideration, motions to dismiss, motions to declare defendant in default, motions for execution, motions for judgment on, on the pleadings, and motions for summary judgment. Number three, 
motion of course a motion for relief to which the moving party is entitled as a matter of right and not for discretion on the part of the court and which requires no investigation of the truth of any allegation or suggestion on which it is found example is motion for execution when the decision has become final and executory pro forma motion is literally a motion in form only it is one in which has the form but not the substance of a motion and is resorted solely to buy time or to delay the proceedings a motion for reconsideration is pro forma when it does not specify the findings of conclusions in the judgment which are not supported by evidence or which are contrary to law making expressed reference to the pertinent evidence or legal special motion it is a motion directed to the discretion of the court and usually involves an investigation of the facts on which the application is predicted next topic is brief a brief also called memorandum of law is a document presented to the appellate court arguing why the reviewing court should affirm or reverse the lower court's decision as the case may be the brief establishes the legal argument for the party based on the legal precedent citing the controlling cases or reliance on the law and other authorities brief is the latin brevis and the french word brief meaning short and condensed statement presented to the court on the points and questions in controversy and by fair argument on the facts and law of the case to assist the court in arriving at a just and proper conclusion trial brief are those filed before the trial courts to resolve disputed matters appellate briefs are presented to appellate courts the appealing party submits his appellant's briefs first the responding party called the appellee answers with the appellee's brief within designated time appellant's brief so according to the rules of appellant's brief shall contain the following in order as follows a a subject index of the matter in the brief with a digest of the arguments and page references and a table of cases alphabetically arranged textbooks and statutes cited with references to the pages where they were cited letter b an assignment of errors which shall be separately distinctly and concisely stated without repetition and numbered consecutively c under the heading statement of the case a clear and concise statement of the nature of the action a summary of the proceedings the appealed rulings and orders of the court the nature of the judgment and any other matters necessary to an understanding of the nature of the controversy with page references to the record d under the heading statements of the facts a clear and concise statement in a narrative form of the facts admitted by both parties and those in controversy together with the substance of the proof relating thereto in sufficient detail to make it clearly intelligible with page references to the record d under the heading statements of the facts a clear and concise statement in a narrative form of the facts admitted by both parties and those in controversy together with the substance of the proof relating thereto in sufficient detail to make it clearly intelligible with page references to the record letter e a clear and concise statement of the issues of fact or law to be submitted to the court for its judgment letter f under the heading argument the appellant's arguments on each assignment of error with the page references to the record the authorities relied upon shall be cited by the page of the report at which the case begins and the page of the report on which the citation is found letter g under the heading relief 
a spe specification of the order of judgment which the appellant seeks. Letter H, in cases not brought up by the record and appeal, the appellant's brief shall contain as an appendix a copy of the judgment or final order appealed from. The appellant's brief. The appellant's brief shall contain in the following in order indicated. Letter A, a subject index of the matter in the brief with a digest of the arguments and page references and a table of cases alphabetically arranged. Textbooks and statutes cited with references to the pages where they are cited. Letter B, under the heading Statement of Facts, the appellant shall state that he accepts the statement of facts in the appellant's brief or under the heading counter statement of facts he shall point out such insufficiencies or inaccuracies as he believes exist in the appellant's statement of facts with references to the pages of the record in support thereof but without repetition of matters in the appellant's statement of facts letter c under the heading argument the appellant shall set forth his arguments in the case on each assignment of error with page references to the record. The authorities relied on shall be cited by the page of the report at which the case begins and the page of the report on which the citation is found. Significance of the brief. The brief is without a doubt the lawyer's single best opportunity to persuade the appellate court. As oral arguments are rare in the appellate level, the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court decide based on briefs and arguments presented. Briefs are sometimes called the most refined of legal conversation and represents the pinnacle of lawyer's craft. Its organization, presentation, argumentation, and writing style must be excellent. Suggestions of the brief. Here I A. Um, strict adherence to the appellate rules of procedure. The rules are designed to give the court the best opportunity to function effectively and efficiently. The rules contain clear suggestion how the courts want things done before then. Careless or willful disregard of the rules may indicate two things. Either the lawyer is too inexperienced for the court to rely on or he does not respect the court enough to follow its rules. The former smacks of incompetence, the latter of arrogance. Either way, the court would not think highly of such law. B. Each of the required elements in a brief must be seen as an opportunity to persuade. The statement of the case, statement of the facts, and statement of the issues must be started clearly and simply. Research. Begin your research by reading the cases that the court from which cited in its decision or order. Likewise, look up on the other cases which sh may shed light on the issue raised on appeal. Reading articles or opinions of law authorities contained in journals and textbooks will help and you may cite them. Letter D. Organize your brief. It is preferable to make a detailed outline of the things you want included in your brief. These include your issues, main arguments, cases, and authorities cited. The arguments should be presented in order. Each main section should be preceded by a short, single-sentence statement of the argument. The argument should be fully con conceptualized, simply written and bolstered by authorities and Supreme Court cases. Use proper citation for all the cases and authorities included in your brief.
Hi classmate, hi attorney, good afternoon. Our topic for today is grammar and usage. So the purpose of this study is to be able to apply the basic rules of grammar in one's writing. Before we continue with our topic, let's first define grammar and usage. Grammar is the study of the way words are used to make sentence. And it also teaches us how commas and semicolons are supposed to be used. While well, usage, the action of using something, or the fact of being. So we will be tackling under grammar and usage five different types. Let's go with the subject-verb agreement. It is defined a subject and its verb must be both singular or both plural. Under this verb, we have agreement and number. A singular subject takes a singular verb, while a plural subject takes a plural verb. So these are the examples for singular verb and plural verb. Number one, the complainant as well as the witness was present. And before we can proceed with the grammar and usage, these are the notable information that we need to notate. Number one, the following are generally considered singular and take singular verb. Example are each, either, neither, one, someone, anyone, everyone, nobody, somebody, much, and the second part is the following are plural and take plural verbs and we can consider the third the following may be singular or plural depending on the meaning intended and it consists of all most some every none any half or more and the fourth one a conjunctive it is a compound subject is usually plural example is the plaintiff and the defendant agree to refer the matter to mediation second is what your sister wants and what my brother wants are poles apart number five each may be plural if the subject is plural rather than a compound singular nouns or pronouns example the speaker each have three minutes to explain their position. And the sixth is adjective used as a noun to represent a class or plural. Unlike collective noun, which represents the whole and taken sing sing singularly, a collective adjective represents no singular entity, but rather the assemblage of individual members, hence taken as a plural subject. Example are the, the beautiful are a class by themselves. The coward die before they die. Number seven, plural form nouns are taken in the plural sense. Plural verbs are therefore used. Example here, the scales of justice deep for both the The second part of the grammar and usage is prepositional phrases. It is defined that come in between the subject and the verb do not affect subject verb agreement rule. Example is one of the one of my friend is attending the party. One in is is the prepositional phrases, and then second example a function of the 14 member board is questioning the report. Function dash is is the prepositional phrases here. Number C, the dependent clauses, it defines that while there may be separate now and verb agreement in dependent clauses, this should not affect the agreement of the main subject and verb. Example is, not one among the senior citizens of the city who are taking medicine is complaining. So the dependent clause is the senior citizen and the main subject. So, letter D, compound but referring to one thing. Compound words that refer to one thing is singular and take singular verbs. Example, rich and fish is his favorite breakfast. And then, barong Tagalog in black pan. And the last part is E, that singular compounds and that appear plural when a singular subject is joined by preposition to other nouns or pronouns. Example is, as well as, along with, together with, but not. The subject remains singular, taking a singular verb. Example, the dean, along with other faculty members, continues to encourage students to study alternative dispute resolution. The next topic in grammar and usage is compounded subjects modified by each and every is singular. When a sentence has more than one subject per verb, those subjects form a compound subject. When the parts of the compound subject are joined by the word end, but the subject is modified by the words each or every, the subject takes a singular verb, not a plural verb. For example, every Ida, Lorna and Fe in this institution is a candidate. Or, 
Each and every Ida, Lorna, and Fe in this institution is a candidate. Next is singular measurements but plural in appearance. A noun expressing an amount or measurement is normally singular. If the unit of measurement refers to a number of individual items, then it is treated as a plural. For example, three blocks is great for exercise. Or, 15 days is the company's annual vacation leave. Next is collective nouns. These are used to describe a group or a collection of individuals. These include groups of people and animals and inanimate objects. Singular if the action is collective because they are still are technically referring to one thing, the group as a whole, but are plural if the action is individual. Personnel, staff, committee, and band are examples of collective nouns. For example, the team deliberates on its strategy or the team have, in the, have their individual personalities. Names and titles in plural form are singular. For example, Paramount Pictures is my favorite studio. Or, the United Nations has only a few large states. For names of science or the practical application, when the name of a science ending in X or ICS, or branches of knowledge is used to refer to the discipline itself, such as economics, mathematics, or statistics, the same is singular. When the particular application of the field is referred, the same becomes plural. For example, economics is his favorite subject, or the economics of studying abroad force Filipino students to be frugal. Lastly, we have disjunctive compounds. If the subject is dis disjunctive compound joined by or or nor, the verb should agree with the element of the compound closest to the verb. For example, neither the prosecutors nor the accused is ready for the trial, or neither the accused nor the prosecutors are ready for the trial. Another one, we have either the dog or the kids were making a rocket downstairs. Or either the kids or the dog was making a rocket downstairs.